I've pulled out the most asked about terms regarding getting your residency in Mexico and put together easy to understand definitions so you can navigate the residency process successfully and move to Mexico legally. For the best advice about moving to Mexico, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when I upload a new episode every Thursday. If you're new to my channel, welcome, and if you've been here before, welcome back. My name is Alex, and I moved to Mexico from the US in 2017. I've called Querétaro home ever since. If this background looks unfamiliar to you, it's because I am not in Querétaro right now. I am actually in Guadalajara this week. Taylor is over there working just out of the frame we're staying in a really cute airbnb near the americana neighborhood i will be sure to link it in the description below here if you want to check it out yourself but getting back to business since I launched my channel back in 2020, I have made numerous videos regarding getting your residency in Mexico. I have covered all kinds of topics, but I am still seeing some of the same questions pop up regarding certain terms related to residency. Visa. The visa is the sticker that they place in your passport after a successful interview at a consulate outside of Mexico. Now getting your visa is just the first step in the Mexico residency process. After the visa is in your passport, you have six months to travel to Mexico where you will then go to INM immigration to submit some final documents and get your residency card. Unless you're applying via family link, then you must start the process. You must apply for a visa first at a consulate outside of Mexico. Economic solvency. In order for the Mexican consulate to grant you a visa, you must demonstrate economic solvency. You've got to show, you've got to provide evidence that you have enough money to support yourself while you're living in Mexico. To do this, depending on the type of residency that you're applying for, you'll show either your bank statements and or your pay stubs. The exact amount for demonstrating economic solvency depends on two main factors. One, whether you're applying for temporary or permanent residency. Two, the consulate processing your visa application. That's right. The exact amount for demonstrating economic solvency, the financial requirements will vary a bit from consulate to consulate. Each consulate has their own way of doing things and their own requirements. For a better idea of the amounts that you will need to show in order to demonstrate economic solvency, check out this video next. It's recent, it was published in 2022 and has the latest information about financial requirements. Apostille. An apostille or an apostilla in Spanish is a certificate authenticating the signature of a public official on a document for use in another country. So when are you going to use an apostille? If you're applying for residency via a family link and you are using a marriage certificate or a birth certificate from a country other than Mexico to do so, then it is very important that that document has an apostille. Let's say that you are married in the state of Ohio. You will need to get in touch with the Ohio Secretary of State office. There's usually information online on their website and send in your marriage certificate, pay a small fee, really something like five or six dollars, and they will send back your marriage certificate with an apostille. Marriage certificates, birth certificates, whatever documents you have from other countries need to have this apostille on it before you can present them to INM in Mexico. Canje. The second part of the residency process, which you must travel to Mexico to complete in Mexico, is the canje step. When you go through immigration, you will fill out an FMM just like all foreigners must fill out for Mexico. But instead of the official marking your FMM like they would a tourist, they will tick the canje box and let you know that you have 30 days to go to INM and finish the residency process to get your residency card. Tramite. Before going to INM, before going to immigration in Mexico, you have to fill out a tramite. You do this online and then you print it out and take it with you to INM. 
Now this is not an appointment, but it does state your reason for why you're at INM, why you wanna go in the building, what you're doing there. When you are filling out the tramite on a line, the drop down menu is gonna ask you, que deseas hacer? And you're going to select canjear o reponer documento migratorio. If you're planning on applying for residency in Mexico and looking for a step-by-step -step guide to walk you through the process, then you can use the code YouTube10 for $10 off the Mexico residency roadmap. You'll get access to an easy to follow 10 point checklist, a detailed FAQ section, a handy residency phrase book, and this is new, a section with firsthand experiences of people who have gone to various consulates and INM offices. Check out the link in the description below for more info. Fotos tipo infantil. Depending on your particular INM location in Mexico, you may or may not need fotos tipo infantil. For example, in Querétaro, you still need a forward-facing photo for your CURP, but in Mexico City, they take all the pictures there. You don't need to bring any with you. Tipo infantil refers to the size of the photograph. It is a very, very, very small photograph. It is smaller than your average passport-sized photo in the US. But if you walk into any photo studio in Mexico, they are gonna know what you're talking about if you ask for photos tipo infantil. Since these measurements are unique to Mexico, I recommend waiting until you're in Mexico to get these photos taken. Huellas. In English, huellas are fingerprints. And when you go to INM to submit your final documents and get your residency card, you will be fingerprinted. Now, a lot of people ask me if the officials at INM speak English and really, don't go there expecting anyone to speak English. It's not like the consulate where everyone is bilingual. Really though, there's no need to panic, no need to freak out because really the exchange is gonna be pretty short between you and the official and a lot of it can just be done with gestures, where to sign, where to look for the camera, that kind of thing. Curp. When you become a temporary or permanent resident of Mexico, you will be assigned a CURP. CURP is an acronym that stands for Clave Única de Registro de Población. Think of it like a social security number. It is unique to you, and once you have it, you will have it for life. While living in Mexico, you'll use your CURP to open bank accounts, buy and register a vehicle, join the national healthcare program, and more. Notificación de cambio. Probably one of the most frequently asked questions that I get is whether or not it's okay to put a temporary address on your forms for INM. Now it is okay to put a temporary address to use the address of a friend or of an Airbnb, but once you have a more permanent dwelling in Mexico, you will need to go back to INM and do a notification of change. Notificación de cambio. You've got to notify INM of any significant changes to your original residency application, including address, notificación de cambio de domicilio, marriage status, notificación de cambio de estado civil, name, notificación de cambio de nombre, nationality, notificación de cambio de nacionalidad, if you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and please feel free to ask any questions in the comments below. I'm Alex from backpackingbrunette.com. Thanks for watching.